So welcome everyone to the Mags Janker show. Hard hitting riffs and honest conversations expanding on the topics and themes I write about on my blog. So breakup recovery, getting back with an ex and self-help in general. In today's episode, we are talking to Rory from The Love Chat, one of the rare few breakup coaches and content creators who I truly respect and admire. And our conversation will be all about reattraction and getting an ex back. So strap in and enjoy. Why breakups, why ex back advice? Like, everyone has their own story. I started breakup advice because, like, I didn't have enough money for therapy and blogging about it was kind of mm-hmm. self-therapy. And on the other end, I got really scammed by this guy. Y- you you know him. I watched your videos, Brad Browning. I felt really like oh, that piece of shit. scammed yeah. by him. Yeah, yeah. And I started to write, write eggs back advice, just flaming on the guy, just hating on the guy. Mm-hmm. And that's essentially how my business started. That's my origin story. And I'm really curious, what's up with you? What's your origin story? How did the yeah. love chat came to be? Uh, kind of an accident, actually. So years ago, um, I got almost 10 years ago now, I was in a relationship with, uh, you know, a fiance. And it turned out that she was like cheating on me with a bunch of other people. And I took that really poorly. I was in a bad place. And um, that was sort of the moment of uh, the sort of the genesis of me figuring out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. So eventually, you know, after months of moping and feeling bad for myself, I went to therapy. I started going to the gym and I decided like, you know, my therapist has really helped me. That's something I might be really interested in myself. So I started just going onto random forums and just helping people. There was no, um, there was no idea of a business in mind. And then over time people are like, Oh, Hey, you're kind of good at this, you know? And that put the bug in my ear of like, Oh, like maybe this is a viable career choice for me. So then I went back to school and got a degree in what's called uh, applied behavioral analysis. And that's mostly working with people who uh, are on the you know autism spectrum. But there are applications mm-hmm. for crime. There's applications for romantic relationships. There's applications for psychology. So I started doing that for a few years. And then I decided, hey, why don't I take what I've learned and make a YouTube channel out of it? So kind of mm-hmm. an accident. Um, more than anything, you know, it just a, a, a chance happening, you know? That's interesting. So you're actually qualified to talk about what you talk about. You didn't just like pick up a life coaching certificate and uh, th- and that's it. Like, you know, most people in this industry. Mm-hmm. You're going to find a lot of people that actually talk about this stuff are, it's not to say that they don't have any good insight. And so I'm not necessarily trying to bash them because, you know, different perspectives, mm-hmm. different people. But mm. you'll notice a lot of people in terms of qualification are not qualified to be talking about this. That does not mean they cannot provide good insight. I want to be really clear with my words. You know, uh, for example, Susan no, Winters I, I, is I get it. a YouTuber um, that oh, I yeah. Oh, yeah. have watched. And she she's, just seems like a really nice, wise person. So just because she doesn't have a degree in something doesn't mean she can't offer something. But then then we mm-hmm. come to people like Brad Browning, um, yeah. Dan Bacon who else? Clay Andrews, people like this who are just like, yeah, yeah, clearly out for the money, not for the helping people. Yeah. I mean, this is also a very fine line. I was always walking on if that's how you say it, because I'm also not qualified. I'm, I'm an engineer by trade. I never went to any, anything remotely (laughs) similar to like psychology school. So, but I think it's fair since like I tell people, Hey, I don't know. I don't know exactly sometimes what I'm talking about. Sure. I just regurgitate other research and insert poop jokes in it. So uh, that, that, <laughs> that, that, that I feel comes as something legit. Yeah, well, I think it comes because the fact that you're being you know, forthcoming about it and saying, look, you know, I'm, not, I'm not a therapist, right? This is what I've learned, and I'm taking what I've learned and, and, and sort of um, putting it in a more digestible format for you to learn. So I think that that's fine because you are informing the, the consumer of the product, which is different yeah. than when you talk to someone like, you know, like we said, the Dan Bacons, the Chris Siders, et cetera, where yeah, they're like, oh, I'm a relationship expert. you're going to get expert. your eggs back. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And I'll, so, also, of course, those claims. Right. I'm, I'm a relationship expert, uh, uh, fixer-upper. You can listen to me. Don't listen to the other guy. Yeah. There's one guy. I can't remember his name for the life of me, but he's uh, he's newer to the breakup scene, whatever that means. 
and he's mm-hmm. just like walking on a beach with his shirt off and he's like no contact is bullshit don't follow no <laughs> contact it's like brother like put a shirt on like I don't know. Uh, there, there's there's so many it, personalities. Is he like a part of the whole Andrew Tate red pill that's kind of popping up right now? The whole probably uh, that that movement, that industry. Yeah, probably. Yeah. By by how you describe it, he's definitely giving out those um, really then bacon amped up to the in uh, to the nth degree kind of vibes. Mm. You'll find that a lot of people like I've been doing this for I don't know since 2016 was when I I think I started the YouTube channel. So I've come across a lot of different personalities by this point. You'll find that most people, their their philosophy, they won't admit it. And that's not to say everybody. Like, mm-hmm. I like Susan Winter. I like Craig Kenneth. Coach Lee, I'm, I'm on the fence on, but I like him more than I dislike him. Um, mm-hmm. You'll find that most people, their mentality, besides the ones I just named, their mentality is, I only need to get you to sign up one time, right? I only, and after that, yeah, I already got your money. What I really noticed is that I think is, like very um notable of you you approach the whole selling of your services in a very unique way um no hypey claims you don't even have mm-hmm. a sales page that seems like it adds to your credibility right yeah i think well first i, I appreciate you saying that for me it's very here's a video for free and i'm going to make a lot of them i think by now i've made over between YouTube and Patreon and Twitch, et cetera, and live streams. I think I've made over a thousand videos. Um, here's the best oh, stuff shit. for free. Here's the truth for free. Here, I'm going to tell you the same thing I'm telling you, unless your situation is radically different. Give away mm-hmm. all your best stuff for free. There's, there's, no, mm-hmm. sa- there's no game here for me. It's here's what I think will help you. If you want my personal mm-hmm. time outside of me recording, editing, et cetera, that's going to cost you because that's my personal. That's time I could be spending with my family. You know what I'm saying? I'm not big on the selling. I'm big on give away your best stuff for free and let the consumer decide. Got it. Got it. So let's pretend, okay? Let's actually do some role play. Let's pretend I'm the consumer, okay? Okay. Let's say I just got dumped by my ex who also cheated on me. Let's Mm. say we are long distance. Let's say... The relationship was relatively normal, healthy relationship. The problem was me. I was insecure. I was codependent. I didn't give my partner space. And that's why everything basically fell to pieces. I come to you right now on like, quote unquote, a coaching call. Mm-hmm. What would you tell me? What, what, what would I hear? You got to leave them alone, right? Uh, it's... So you've, you've outlined a bunch of issues. So first, what I would do with the person is break down. Here is specifically, based on the situation you're telling me, here are the mm-hmm. issues that we need to correct. Number one, long distance is difficult for any relationship. It's going to conflate all problems. So if there's a long-term, long-distance relationship, there needs to be a plan to close the gap. That's got to be number one. Um, because you can get back together, and if the distance is still there, the problems are still going to co- They're going to come flying right back at the first argument. That doesn't mean... Oh, you know, you want to reconcile, move to them. No, it's saying if you guys are going to get back together in a healthy reconciliation, that conversation should happen sooner than it happens later, right? So that's more introspection. Do I have, if we reconcile, do I have the finances? Do I have the means, the logistics to be able to move to this person or for them to move to me? Um, Mm -hmm. Number two, if the neediness and the sort of clinging on to the ex and making them my entire life, if that was present in the relationship, obviously that can't be because a relationship is made up of two people wanting to have a healthy connection together, right? Two people at 100%. You can't have one person at 100%, one person at 50 or or vice versa. It's, what are we ultimately tr- talking about here? We're talking about attraction. If the person cannot be attracted to you because you're showing qualities that repel How can you have a romantic relationship? Because being too needy is not romantic. That is a child to a mother or or father. It is not, hey, you're my entire world and I need you and I love you and I, I, I can't exist without you. How can the other person remain attracted to you? How can they respect you? Now, let's say I'm super stubborn and I say, okay, Rory, I get what you're saying, but like break, uh, staying in no contact staying away, respecting my ex's space, it's so hard. I want to reach out every fucking day. True. 
And like, th- because the reason I ask this is because this is something that I argue with my coaching clients. And mm-hmm. honestly, sometimes I don't know how to handle it. It's like, I'm, I'm having basically on the phone call for 15 minutes, half an hour. Basically, I'm convincing the other person of like why you should not contact your ex, why it's a bad idea to reach out. And I'm curious, like, what would you say if I was really stubborn like that? Sure. In that moment, it's about listening, right? So on top of doing, um, you know, applied behavioral analysis, I'm also a therapist, a relationship therapist. That's a, that's a newer thing. Mm-hmm. What I have found is that hearing them out and sympathizing with them and being able to say, you know what? I totally get it. I totally get where you're coming from. You're, this thing was taken from you and your entire life you've been taught if you want a thing, you need to work for the thing, right? If, if you want a six pack, you got to go to the gym. If you want good grades, you got to study. So we're taught mm-hmm. again and again and again throughout our life. If you want um, something, you need to work really hard for it. The difference in this particular case is that we're not dealing with a six pack or, you know, good grades. We're dealing with a human being with free will. So how can you go to them after they've just dumped you? How can you go to them and say, hey, I know you're trying to do the exact opposite thing that I want you to do, but why don't you do my thing? You're setting yourself up as an adversary to them. And when you put yourself in an adversarial position with someone, they don't want to listen. So people get caught in this illusion of action where, but I need to do something. No contact. You're asking me to to achieve something by doing nothing. And my entire life I've been taught the dogma that that's just not how it works. So I think getting them to do other things in the meantime would be helpful, right? Uh, Going to the gym, working with a therapist, hanging out with some friends they haven't seen in a while, maybe going traveling, explore a new culture, try some new food. And just asking them to trust the process and reminding them the reason that you want to do something is because your whole life you've been taught that you need to do something, but that's not necessarily accurate. So if we, let's say, fast forward a little bit, let's say I said, okay, okay, I'm going to try to be less stubborn. I'm going to listen to Rory. I'm going to do as he says. And I actually got some traction going on with my ex, right? However, Mm -hmm. the problem is my ex, like, for example, when we text each other, when we talk on the phone, she's given me, and let's say it's a she for this reason, uh, for this example, uh, Mm -hmm. she's given me mixed signals. One day, she's all lovey-dovey. One day, she's receptive. But then, the next day, she pulls away. She's cold. She gives me those little uh, one-word type responses Mm -hmm. that obviously scare the living bejesus out of anyone who's trying to get an ex back. Sure. What what would you say in that case? Should I just like pull away further? Should I try to uh, fl- make the conversation flow in a, like a better direction? Tell me what like what's your approach here? Yeah. So I, I'm a fan of only interacting with people um, by and large when they're in a receptive state. So mm-hmm. otherwise, it's you're just trying to constantly fight an uphill battle with someone who's not trying. I, I think people need to remember. We're ultimately talking about a romantic relationship. That is only possible when you have two willing participants. If you have one willing person, uh, if you have one overly willing person, and then another person who's Mm -hmm. just like, Monday, yeah, let's do it. Tuesday, mm, I don't really know. Wednesday, sure. Thursday, I hate your guts. It's like you can't, that's not sustainable. So my advice to people in that particular situation would be when they're being receptive, set a date, right? Go hang out, have fun. If on Monday, your partner is being really open and talkative and fun mm-hmm. and flirty. That's when you should set a date. Strike when the iron is hot. Um, if on Tuesday, they're being really distant and, um, you know, one word texts, just don't really interact with them. You don't really need to text them because if they're being like that anyway, they're not going to text you first. You know, if on Tuesday they're in a sour mood, they're, they're cold, as they say, they're not mm-hmm. going to text you first. You were probably over texting them. That is most of the time what i see sometimes you'll see a partner where the other person just can't i can't figure out what they want I just no matter what i do i seem to piss them off if that's the case they're they're probably being resentful or playing games and just don't interact with them self-reliance is a huge part of this and it seems like it's also a huge part to kind of differentiate between whether you're trying to rekindle a healthy relationship or kind of a dysfunctional relationship it seems like mm-hmm. there are two very different approaches here because with, like you said, a uh, dysfunctional, let's say, partner, they're going to be playing games, or ex-partner yeah. in this case. They're going to yeah. be trying to manipulate you. However, what if they are simply emotional? 
What if they're not playing games, they're not toxic, they're not trying to manipulate you? What if they simply don't know what they want? One day they le- they lean one way, the other day they lean the other way. They're basically still maybe uh, going back and forth between various stages of grief or the stages of a breakup. Sure. What? Yeah. How would you approach that situation? How would you even think about it, really? Kind of the same answer, because if they're okay. emotional, think of it this way. We're generally always emotional, right, about one thing or another. We we know True. I don't I don't know that people ever break it down like that. I'm content. It's like right now mm-hmm. I'm sitting in a comfy studio. I got some tea. I got a nice little blankie on me. I'm content. We're chilling, right? Having a good conversation. Mm-hmm. When someone's emotional, um, specifically cold, rude, mean, bitter, angry, pick pick one. Even if they're emotional because they're confused, well, that's great. But I I'm not confused. Mm-hmm. So I'm not trying to pull them out of whatever state they're in. I'm trying to interact with them when they're in my state. So Got it. Got it. I know I want a romantic relationship. You left me and I didn't want that. And I know what I want. You're the one that's confused. Give me a call when you're not confused. And in the meantime, I got work to do on myself, right? I got to hit the gym. Uh, you know, the whole list I, I gave earlier. It's, I have personal, if we're tying it back into that long distance relationship example you gave earlier, mm-hmm. and I was totally overly needy, Well, that needs correcting Mm -hmm. because I can't be like that because then I'm not going to get any person. I need to be able to be someone I'm proud of because I only get one shot. As far as we know, after this, we're dead, right? We're, we're, we're dirt. I got to play the best round I can play. That's just how it has to be because I don't know what's happening next. What I do know is that if I live my life needy and anxious and constantly Mm -hmm. relying on others to feel good about myself, most people aren't going to want to be with me. Let's say everything's going great. Mm -hmm. However, you know, I think this is a very common situation when it comes to like most people. I'm just curious in general how you approach it because we, we, I think every breakup coach, expert, however you want to call us, they have their own approach, which is a little bit different, at least from the other ones. And it's all the topic I'm talking about is being friends. My ex wants to be just friends. Yeah. I know I know about you know the bad approaches use the friendship as like a backdoor to a to a new relationship try to trick mm-hmm. your ex into being friends first and then you can get close to them you can infiltrate their social circle and this other really f- filthy <laughs> slimy language uh, and people then use she will be mine <laughs> a- exactly yeah and then she's going to be yours like your property <laughs> Jesus mm-hmm. Christ I'm curious, yeah. if your ex hits you with, let's just be friends, in your book, how would I respond? What does it really mean? Uh, I hit her with, let's kiss my ass. Look, I, I'm, I keep it real with people, man. I, I have no intention okay. on being friends with someone I'm romantically attracted to. Remember, the word is romantically, right? I'm not talking about sexually or you know, personality-wise. I'm talking romance. I want to be with them romantically. And think about the torture that you put yourself into by following that line of thinking of, wow, I really want to be with this person. Um, let me let me sneak back into their good graces. How? They already know what dating is like. They already know what they signed up for and they rejected it, right? For whatever reason, because there's, there's a million different reasons. I would say there has to be a, a level of time where you need to just either, you know, focus on the reconciliation or focus on moving past the r- romantic relationship, getting past your romantic feelings. And then if you want to be friends, that's totally fine. One of my best friends is an ex of mine. But mm-hmm. A, we were friends for 14 years before we dated. And B, we dated for two years and then stopped speaking for a year. And now we're friends. There has been time. I don't romantically desire them anymore. So the idea that I will be friends with an ex, hang out with them, and get them back into my life romantically, can it work? I'm sure in the history of ever, it's happened a few times. Sure. but. You're putting yourself in a, in a torturous state where you're seeking constantly, you're seeking romantic attention because you don't want to be their friend. Be honest with yourself. You don't want to be their friend, right? You want to be with them romantically and you're just doing whatever you can to hold on onto the scraps. But again, it comes back to this, the question of respect. How can they respect you when you know mm-hmm. and they know you want more? Yeah, that's pretty much a good point. Mainly because I preach the same thing and it kind of confirms my own discoveries. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man. 
it's torture. It's just straight but, up torture. You're, you're sitting there looking at them longingly, watching them eat pizza. <laughs> it's just it's a relationship. But check torture. out this Don't tradition. Do you, you know what else is torture? Waiting for days and then reaching out with some pre-prepared text message, just counting down the days till Brad Browning said you can reach out. Now is your your chance. What, what do you say to the whole? 30 day no contact periods, the 60 day, the hell, the the seven day no contact periods from uh, our good friend Dan Bacon. Oh, is there a seven day one now? I didn't know that. Yeah, that, that's yeah, what it takes. Yeah, man. Dan Bacon promotes the seven day no contact period. And I'm like, that's just a fast track to like a restraining order. These guys are giving, it's it's kind of what we said earlier. They're giving people the illusion of action. They're telling people, actually, there is something you can do to your ex. You wait for seven days, right? And then you can't, that's what it takes. Seven, we've had, we've been having communication problems for years, but seven days and it's all good, baby. It's all fixed. That's not how people work. What, what we're looking for, let's say it does work. I'm going to, I'm going to go the other way. Let's say you wait seven or 30 or 45, however many days, because these guys have cracked the, the human code. Um, and it does work. My question is, is their behavior consistent? Not did it work once on one day? When you caught them emotional, they were thinking about the relationship, they were sad for a day. Because what we're looking for is consistent behavior. I want them to consistently be able to want to work things out. Not just Tuesday, right? But Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, et cetera, all the way. Because that's what it takes to actually reconcile is the partner recognizes, I want to be here. I want to fix this. Not a momentary lapse where they're being sad because like, look, the dumper is going to be sad too. Nobody wants a breakup. Right? Nobody wants to feel like I'm done with this relationship. Nobody wants to have to deliver a breakup talk. It's just, it sucks. It's painful. You recognize the pain you're mm -hmm. inflicting on someone else. But the seven days, 30 days bullshit, it, it's just a sales tactic, man, because they're, they're preying on vulnerable people who are buying into the mentality that they need to do something. Got it. Tell me this. When would you tell someone that's trying to get an ex back, dude, gal, whatever, it's best if you move on, if you, if you let them go. This isn't going to work out. And even if it does, let's say, it's not going to be a fulfilling, healthy relationship that you want and deserve. I tell them, move on, move forward is the, is the terminology I use because I do believe that they're different. I, I, don't, I don't think that that's just spin. So move forward because you have mm -hmm. to, this has to be about you, right? It can't be about them. Mm -hmm. You need to pretend mm -hmm. as though they're never coming back. And of course, there's a chance they could come back. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's, you know, but I don't want people to focus on the hope. I want people to just put their nose down and get to work. And yeah, if they reach out, happy surprise. Look at that. Wow. Now you're actually ready to handle them because you weren't doing all of this for them. And I can give you an anecdote from my own life where at first, you know, my first partner, the one, uh, the fiance I mentioned who cheated on me, I was with her for 10 years and we were living together and like we were engaged and our wedding was a few months away and just, you know, all of that gone 26 and single again. So at that time I did go to the gym, but I went to the gym for her. I did go to therapy, but I went to therapy for her, right? I did all of these self-improvement things for her. And then my therapist said something to me. He's like, dude, you're stuck with you the rest of your life. Don't you think this should be for you? And I was in a place where I was ready to hear that. And I was like, yeah, wait, hold on. I would own a minute. Fuck her. And then she did reach out half a year later. And I told her, thanks, but no thanks. I'm not, you know, not looking for that anymore. So mm -hmm. it has to be for you because you are truly <clears throat> stuck with you the rest of your life. So if you're stuck with you until you die, you might as well make you someone you like. You might as well become friends with you. So ever since then, I've made it a point to like spend time on my own, right? Go for long, hour long, two hour long walks mm -hmm. and just journal in like in, in my phone or something. And I've gotten to like me. I like who I am. I like my response to things. And I think that has more than anything helped. Um, and, and now, by the way, I'm engaged again. I'm, you know, living with someone else who's moving all my shit, you know, all that. So sure. what I noticed when I was coaching people is that I don't want to call them stupid. Let's just say your average intelligence um, people, right? Mm -hmm. They are really good at following not orders, but just advice. I tell them, okay, you want to get your eggs back. You want to get over them, whatever. Do X, Y, Z, try it out, experiment with it. 
they do it, uh, they get usually decent results and everyone's happy, right? Mm -hmm. And by the way, the reason I know that to be for a fact is because with my coaching calls, there's like a community also that people get for free so we can stay in touch even after we have our call. So just sure. putting that out there. Now, when it comes to smart people, to very like intellectual people, I know this, that whatever advice I give to them, like don't try to go down the whole 30 day no contact route. Don't try to post on social media that you're living this really bombastic life on purpose uh, mm -hmm. just to make your ex jealous if they maybe see those posts or something, right? What I notice with these very smart clients is that whenever I give them advice like that, they usually are really, really good at rationalizing this advice and mentally gymnasticizing themselves into following whatever other solutions feel good and feel right, but are not the most effective thing you could be doing. So my question is, is this a phenomena that you came across? How do you deal with it? Like how do you oh, deal with these times. types of clients who are, yeah, talk, 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 tell me, tell me, explain yourself. I'm dying to know. <laughs> okay. So yes, you come across that a lot. People who intellectualize and, and, and they sort of, um, they need to pick apart sort of the hows and whys of everything. And then they need uh, uh, studies yeah. on top of that, <clears throat> right? To, to sort of <clears throat> prove to themselves to basically those are people who get trapped in just a shit ton of overthinking uh, over something that does not require that much thought. So how do I handle that? I remind them, number one, you can think all you want. This <clears throat> isn't a thinking game. This is an emotions game. We're not talking about lot. We're not talking about one plus one equals two hard facts that, that clearly align and make sense. Right. We're talking about emotions that don't play fair. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're talking about people. You, you can do everything right. And you've researched, uh, you know, John Gottman and all these other, uh, marriage, uh, LMFT people and like, well, John Gottman says to do this, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, they're forgetting the one simple truth, which is if the other person is not willing it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter how well you do it it doesn't matter what study you found on on what uh romantic tactics to use i can't even think of it because i i have had people go so deep down a rabbit hole and then quote these studies that they found mm -hmm. and i'll say okay well send me the study they'll send me the study and it's by someone who has no absolutely no background in any of this stuff or the study is like a, a case group of three people or it's a self-reported study, yep. which, you know, you might as well just throw it out the window. It, it's that. It's it's the over-intellectualization, and they get caught in intellectualization. Whereas, so so you asked specifically, what do I do about it? I'm a fucking yeah. wrecking how ball. How do you approach I'm a, them? I'm a blunt guy from New Jersey. <laughs> okay. So I'm, and that, I, how I does just, that look like? I'm like, bro, shut the, f if, 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 like, you hired me to tell, to tell you my opinion, not for you to tell me yours, right? And I'm, when I say that, I'm not trying to be yeah. a dick. What I'm doing is something very specific that that's used not only in life coaching, but also in, in therapy, which is called a state break. They're not used to being handled like that. Okay. They're used to intellectualizing and like stomping <clears throat> all over people, like stomping them into submission. So I need to break them a into a receptive good state. technique. Oh, yeah, because they're not expecting. I, okay. And I'm very, the first sentence I tell any of my clients is, I am the blunt one. I am the very straightforward one. Do you understand? You recognize I'm going to say some things during this call that may like make you go, oh. So I always make sure, and when they sign up, they understand that. So they agree to this. And then I'm like, bro, bro what the fuck are you talking about here, man? Like, what, what, she broke up with you because you were a needy fuck. So I'm not trying to be mean in that moment. I'm trying to break yeah. their state to get them to listen. Because right now they're very, wall's up. I can't help you if your wall is up. And, and I have no interest in breaking your wall if you really, really don't want to let it down. So I'll try a few things. And then I'll say, hey, I don't think I'm the right coach for you, you know. Now here's a refund. That's generally what I'll do because I need people to be receptive. I, I can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped, who wants to just come and convince me of every little thing that they believe. If, if the simple fact that not only am I a professional with several degrees in this, I'm also just not emotional mm -hmm. right now. And you are, you're trying to rationalize and justify your emotions. I'm not trying to dismiss them, but because you're emotional and because that's every waking thought you have during the day is how to get her back. 
plotting, planning, strategizing. I can't help if you won't listen because I'm not emotional and I am the expert in the room. So it's, I'm not trying to like big dick them, but I am trying to get them to listen because why else are we here? You're paying me for a free hour of you telling me what you believe. It's like, I'm not going to be helpful to you then. Good answer. Okay. But anyway, to move on from this topic, if we can make a list, what would in your opinion be like the, some of the bad recommendations that you hear in this industry, in your area of expertise, ranked or not ranked, whatever you like, what are just some things that people should keep an eye out for? And whenever they notice them, they can be like, okay, that guy recommending me this approach, idea, whatever, maybe they don't have my best interest in mind. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Anything related to putting power into your hands as it relates to your ex, right? So what I specifically mean by that is, like, think about the seven day, 30 day, 45 day, no contact. And then you contact them, right? So you do this thing and then Mm -hmm. you do something to your ex. Any type of recommendation that has you doing something to your ex is a bad idea in my, in my personal belief system. And from what I've seen, Mm -hmm. um, staying friends Mm -hmm. with your ex, right? Sending a handwritten letter, a reset letter to your ex. See what I'm, see where I'm going with this. Anything that has you do things to your ex, your ex needs to be willing and receptive and want to work things out. And when they come to you. Yeah then you can uh, like if they're coming to you not for like oh hey merry christmas happy birthday uh sorry your mom died right not texts like that but if it's a random tuesday nothing's going on nothing happened and then you hear from them that's when you strike yeah yeah because they want to hear from you they're coming to you um what else yeah no handwritten letters don't be friends with your ex um you can wish them like a Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday. That's fine. I I personally don't have an issue with that. I used to, but I've, you know, I grew up a little bit. Um, no social media stalking. Mm-hmm. Oh mm-hmm. God, please, no social media stalking. Don't find out any information about them. That's just one of perhaps the worst thing you can do is look up information about your ex. Because your brain is not in a state where it's playing fair right now. So looking up information about them is either going to A, do nothing other than relieve you. And once you're relieved, a little time goes by and then you need more relief, right? It sets up like a drug habit almost. Or B, you do find out something you really wish you didn't see and then you're destroyed over it. Or something is removed and you're destroyed over it. A a picture that you guys took together, their profile picture changed. Their status on Facebook went from in a relationship to single. Don't do it. Just, Just don't do it, man. And I've heard variations of people going on like Spotify and like listening to uh, seeing what songs the ex was listening to and oh it's a sad song with sad lyrics that must mean they want me back or on Venmo to see who yeah. they're exchanging money with it's just <laughs> it's just don't don't do it guys just don't fucking do it it's so bad for you uh, this kind of brings me not really to my next question but just a concern that popped up in my mind and I'm I'm curious to hear if you agree or disagree with it so something I talk about a lot is that well first of all I get a lot of emails of people asking me, my ex did or said, uh, or so, sorry, my ex said X, Y, Z. Does this mean A, B, C, right? And I mm-hmm. usually tell them it doesn't fucking matter. Look at mm-hmm. what they're doing. To give yep. you a concrete example, your ex can tell you how much they miss you, how much you mean to them, how special you were and everything, right? If they're not making an, an actual effort to like go out with you, they don't actually love you. And a lot of people think and kind of equate your ex telling you, hey, I, I still love you though. Maybe I'm not, maybe I don't love you in that way. Maybe I just like feel really strongly for you. They equate that of their ex wanting to try again. Mm-hmm. But that ex is pretty much unreceptive apart from just telling them something like this. What do you think about looking at your ex's actions instead of just what they say or uh, what they what they mean? Yeah, that's a good question. I think what they're pouring active energy into, right? By that I mean what they're pouring mm-hmm. active resources, time, money, etc., into, is is the behavior you want to pay attention to. I can say I love you, I miss you, I care about you. If I'm not doing anything to show that, right? No, no tangible action I can point at and see. Say, look, they they actually did that. It's not just words coming out of their mouth. That's actually what they did. They showed up at work and brought me lunch. They are saying yes when I try and set up a date. Um, they're being playful and fun. 
we just had sex, like those things, things you can point to and say that did happen. And the key here is to say that yeah. these are happening consistently, right? It can't just be, it happened one time because your ex is human. They're weak. Uh, uh, they'll have moments of weakness rather. They can give in. They mm-hmm. may have sex with you and, or, or go on a date <clears throat> with you or ha- send flirty texts to you once and then not again, right? We're looking for the behavior that's consistent. So consistent, actionable behavior, not words. Words are great, but until you, you know, put your money where your mouth is, it doesn't matter. But on the receiving end, Got it. I can see where someone would be like, oh, but, but they did this. See, look, they sent me this text. This has got to mean something. It's like, maybe. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm saying, let's see where it goes. Tell me, to kind of flip the script now, okay? What we, so we went over a bunch of behaviors that you would say are pretty much bad recommendations, which I think all of it was fair. I, I agree. I literally have no criticism whatsoever. Mm-hmm. What would you say are not just some good approaches to getting an ex back, however, are also underrated. More people should be talking about them, in your opinion, based on like your knowledge on our industry. So I dislike the mentality of get your ex back, right? I, I like to think of it as get yourself back. And as you're working on yourself, if your ex wants okay. to come along for the ride and they reach out, then then great. So underrated tips mm-hmm. that I think will align with the mentality of get your of, of like reconciliation, get your ex back. Um, number one, the gym. I mean, people. Uh, I'm not a particularly like uh, gym heavy guy. I probably go three or four times a week, but I don't go for any physical benefits. Although obviously mm-hmm. there are physical benefits, I go for the mental peace that you get from the gym. So. I think that that's something that a lot more people need to take a lot more seriously. It really, really does help you think more clearly, helps you feel better, helps you process some emotions, particularly anger. Um, That's number one. Number two, journaling. Just not enough people journal. Think about this. Mm -hmm. I want my ex back. I'm emotionally turbulent. I have all this turmoil in my head. I'm missing them. I'm thinking about them. I want to text them. I want to call them. I recognize that that'll make me look, uh, I don't know, needy or maybe it's not appropriate or they asked for space and I'm not wanting to give them space. I can journal all these feelings. I can write a letter to my ex and then burn it, right? Any form of mindfulness in journaling, meditation, yoga, those types of things Mm -hmm. help so much to process your emotions. Now you might say, okay, fine, but what does that have to do with the ex? What does that have to do with reconciliation? It prepares you for the possibility that they reach out. And if and when they reach out, you're not just going to freak out and panic and, wow, what do I do? But now you're in a much more calm, relaxed place because you spent time, A, focusing on grounding yourself and being mindful, being in the present moment, not worrying Mm -hmm. about what's going to happen, but what is happening. But B, you just processed a lot of the emotions, right? You don't, a, a lot of them may still be there, but they're not nearly as strong because you spend time talking about them, feeling them, thinking them through, maybe working with a therapist. So any form of active mindfulness, I think will be really, really helpful. And I I don't see many people do it, Um, particularly journaling, which has a lot of science behind it. Uh, Do you, by the way, when you journal, do you like do bullet journals? Do you do the James Clear journal? Any specific approach that really resonates with you? Or do you think it will resonate with like most people? For me personally, I do two types of journaling. I do uh, just a written free thought journal, right? It doesn't necessarily have any sort of organization to it Mm -hmm. because for me, I'm not, I'm not looking to organize my thoughts necessarily. I'm looking to sort of vomit them on the page. That's just what works for me personally. For some people, they, they benefit from organization. Uh, the second type of journaling is I'll bring like my phone and some headphones. I'll go for a long walk, an hour or two, and I'll just talk into a voice recorder. Now, I don't even necessarily listen back. I just sort of, here's where I'm at. Here's what I'm feeling. Here's the mm-hmm. thoughts that are churning. And I am speaking them. I'm, I'm giving it a different venue other than writing to get them out onto paper. And I think that's what has perhaps been the most helpful for me. That's an interesting approach. I, mm-hmm. I never tried that. Might, might try it actually one day. I, I really, yeah, interesting. Recording your thoughts while you're walking. Like I heard mm-hmm. about talking to yourself on a walk. But recording them, interesting. A little walkie-talkie, man. 
If, <laughs> yeah, walkie talkie. <laughs> and anyway, anyway. So for this next question, I'm gonna read a little bit of it because because it, it's a rather long. It's a longer one. Although I don't think the answer would be would need to be that long as as the question is. However, it might be something that is above our pay grades, okay? But I'm just sure. really dying to know anyways, so here goes. With Gen Z being way more sensitive and unforgiving toward marketing tricks, aggressive salesmanship, and internet uh, scammers in general, do you think the breakup industry, so the how to get over a breakup industry as well as the how do I get my eggs back industry, is on an upward trend or a downward trend towards cleaning itself up from your typical snake oil salesmen like your Brad Browns, Brad Brownins and Kelly Andrews and stuff like that. Like, what have been your general observations of our overall industry, the culture around it, and where do you think it is heading? Like, are we talking about more ninja tactics and tricks down the road? Or are we talking about more personal development, honesty, vulnerability, stuff that you and I preach? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I would have to say the breakup industry, and again, it just feels gross calling it a, an industry. It's just weird. But <laughs> the breakup world. Space? Space. space. Okay. Let's um, call it space then. In general is on a decline. Um, I'm basing that off of figures from YouTube uh, and Google Trends and YouTube Trends. It is mm -hmm. not as searched as it used to be, which I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want people to stay here. Uh, it, and this is something I say in a lot of my videos too, which is like, listen for a little while and then leave. Stop listening. Get out of here. Don't stay here, right? Especially fucking Reddit, man. It's just a, yeah. a place of toxicity. I would like to think- Tell me about it. So the true answer is I don't know. I don't have any mm -hmm. science or numbers to say people like Dan Bacon, Brad Browning are doing any worse. Mm -hmm. I would say the, the space as a whole is doing worse, which is ideal, right? We don't want people having to uh, go to places like this for long periods of time. If we could regulate it and say, hey, only the good ones get to stick around, then like, then it being diminished is sort of sad because I, I like to think that we're doing good work here mm -hmm. and helping mm -hmm. people. I think Gen Z is uh, a lot more wise to a lot of the bullshit out there because mm -hmm. they've spent most of their life on the internet. You know, um, I was alive before smartphones and God, I remember I was 14 and I had like a Motorola razor or something like that. You, you, you had like two games on it and maybe there was a browser on it, but the browser was horrible and crappy. It was not, it by no definition was it a smartphone. So mm -hmm. I've been alive long enough to see the boom of the internet and then the boom of the smartphone, and now the boom of AI. Um, I think probably as a whole, the industry is shrinking rather than growing. And I think as a whole, that's probably a good thing. At the same time, a lot of people uh, I know that are Gen Z, you know, they go to therapy when they get a paper cut. So there's something to be said of a bit of resilience. And I'm saying this as a therapist, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think we need to balance being able to tough some things out with being able to find 10 million web pages and resources because it's like no different than like yeah my stomach hurts let me go google it oh turns out i have stomach cancer like wow if you listen to google for every little thing you know the worst of the worst i like to think that people need to, to be able to depend on themselves i'm a pro self-reliance type of person yeah um but with self-reliance needs to also come wisdom and recognizing when all right i may need some help handling this so i guess my answer is both it's it's shrinking okay. which i think is a good thing i'm glad people are relying on themselves more often as long as they know when it is time to reach out for you know some help some yeah. perhaps more qualified help it, it it's very interesting um i know you made a collaboration video a long time ago with this guy um this is the same answer the dating guy gave in his farewell video i think Oh, is it? That's funny. Do you remember? <laughs> do you remember him? I I remember him very well. I still talk to him from time to time. Oh, awesome! Is he doing okay? Yeah, he's doing well. He's he's actually has another YouTube channel. I I don't know that he wants me sharing it though. Oh, well, that's not fine. You don't have to. You don't have to share it. But um, 
I'm happy for the guy. Like that that farewell video was like just a really emotional also for me because um he really helped me with my own relationship issues as well. He's a good guy. He was a rare yeah. breed. Yeah. He knew when to get the hell out. He's so he's smart. Because he quit? Uh so okay. I think it was good of him and, and I'm I'm slowly hitting this point too where, you know, I, I doubt I'll be doing this past twenty twenty four. Um mm-hmm. but who knows? There are only so many videos you can make. Like we've said what we have to say. I struggle to. Yeah. I used to make videos daily, like five videos a week. Cause at the time I wasn't doing any uh, video editing. I was just, it was just a podcast with my voice. Yeah. And audio editing is so much easier and quicker. So, so true. Yeah. Th- at the time, I had a lot to talk about. I had a lot to say. I was much closer to my breakup. Even if it, it had been years, it hadn't been 10 years, right? I'm, so past and over it now i'm not necessarily in the place i used to be and so for dating guy he recognized like i i have nothing left to say i've made a bunch of videos uh people enjoy them i have nothing left to say and i think he was done i think he was burnt out uh and i'm speaking for him right he he didn't directly say this i'm speaking for him so i don't you know yeah a grain of salt but i think he wanted to focus on more creative endeavors and recognize that it is very hard to do that when everybody knows him as the dating guy yeah that, that's all he is and if he announces i i've actually fallen victim to this i announced on my youtube channel years ago that i was going to start on twitch right and then i had like on my first day on twitch i had a hundred people show up which is rare for twitch and all of them are asking me breakup stuff and i was like oh right this was perhaps the wrong audience to advertise this to because yeah. they're going to want me to be Rory from the love chat over there too, but I don't necessarily want to be that guy anymore, you know? So I think that's how the dating guy felt. Two notes. Okay. Uh, first of all, after writing about this topic for about five years, I just released my book on getting an eggs back on reattraction. I'm hitting the same point. Fun fact. That's the reason I began this podcast. I need a different medium. I want to do something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm also trying to expand my brand over the next few years to just general personal development. So, um, really interesting that all three of us are kind of like in a similar spot when it comes to this topic. And it's also interesting because this was actually my last question. Okay. So correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. So to basically read out the question to show how funny this is. You've implied or somewhat said in a few recent videos, but not so recent, that you'd like to expand beyond breakups and start giving love and life advice in general. Is that a direction you're still pursuing? And also, whether it is or isn't, what does the future of the love chat look like? Books, courses, communities, speaking, different topics. Uh, Do you have, Rory, any particular plans or aspirations that you are comfortable sharing? Let me think about that. Uh, I'll probably t- do a lot more live streams on YouTube. I like doing live streams more than I like making videos at, at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, videos are obviously more lucrative. Obviously, they pay better. Um, mm-hmm. But I like interacting with live audiences. I don't necessarily enjoy any more making video or audio posts. In terms of doing more like self-help stuff i've i've done a little more of that if you notice the past few videos um not the latest one but the the past few videos are like one of them's like how to find purpose in life and that was a Mm -hmm. video that i recorded live on twitch and i posted it to youtube um honestly at this stage of my life you know uh where i'm getting married having kids things like that how how old are you by the way i think you're the said on twitch that you're like mid 30s yeah i'm in my mid 30s yeah okay Um, okay and I always, I always, it's a, it's a fun mystery. I, I always tell people that I'm like 102. I like to keep people guessing. The, the true answer is I'm in my mid 30s, but I'll never tell exactly what age. It's just fun to listen to people's guesses. Um, <laughs> Got it. So the real answer is I don't know. I, mm. I've YouTube. I think YouTube and I are old friends, but we've sort of run our course. So I'm probably mm-hmm. going to slowly fade away. But that doesn't mean from time to time I won't like pop back in and post a video. 
perhaps I'll start an entirely new channel where I post videos about mental health, um, you know, just from the therapy work that I do. But I think it yeah. wouldn't be through the love chat because every time I post a video that's not about some type of breakup information, <laughs> people are like, ah, oh, we don't like this. Give us back the, yeah. the breakup stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh, all right. Well, we have time for just one more. This is like a very generic question. I, I, you probably will hear a lot. Um, do it. it asked a lot on interviews, but I think it could be interesting. Really, it depends on your answer. No pressure, though. If you could have a giant billboard anywhere with anything on it for millions of people who are going for a breakup to see, what would it say and why? It could be a few words or maybe like a paragraph. I think I'll keep it simple, right? Okay. It, it gets easier. It gets easier. <laughs> it do, cool. Which is true. It does. It, for everybody listening, for everybody who's going through a breakup, no matter how bad it feels right now, it gets easier. It gets better. The way you think about it changes. The 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 problem solving your brain does right now might be in a panicked state but then later it's just kind of like oh well that was a stupid idea why do i want to do that right how you feel today good bad etc will change maybe for the better maybe for worse but for breakups i can say one thing with complete conviction it gets easier it really does unless this comes with a caveat unless you are at home scrolling through reddit breakup stories looking for success stories social media stalking looking at their spotify their instagram asking mutual friends about them then it gets harder because it's a drug man and if you're sitting at home injecting yourself with more drugs don't be shocked when you're still addicted if however you're focusing on yourself and putting in a really good faith effort to just like let me hit the gym let me talk to a therapist hang out with my friends etc generic self-help stuff if you're putting in a good faith effort, you will be rewarded every time. It's just how it goes. Got it. And this is the segment where you are invited to promote your shit, your uh, your book, your coaching, your website. So take it away, Rory. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, I have a YouTube channel. It's called The Love Chat. Uh, if you want to check it out, then, then go for it. If you found what I said helpful, there's more stuff that's helpful there. <laughs> um, uh, what else? I don't really ever do self-promotion much outside my channel. Um, And I have a Twitch channel. Twitch.tv slash Hi Rory TV. R-O-R-Y. Rory. I got a weird name. Okay. Cool. Well, I That's also, to, to kind of uh, relate to you on this point, I have no idea how to end the podcast. Um, Take care, everyone. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Max Jankar. Some yeah, just Megs Jenker, my website megjenker.com if you want to read my shit. Uh, cause I am primarily an author author and uh, writer. And uh yeah, something something, give me money, buy my shit. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs>